Hello, 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 everybody out there in internet land. Welcome back to another episode of the No Skill Podcast. Hello, how's everybody doing? What's bonking? I am your lovely host today. My name is DJ. And to my left is Brendan. What it do? And then 180 degrees to this side is Mickey. I'm here, everyone. It is us, the No Skill Boys. We're back at it again at the age old, age favorite uh, campsite, the one where it all started. And I love the fact that we actually picked this world because this is where it all started. This is our old stomping grounds, if you will. And speaking of old, we wanted to talk to you guys about some old shit, more like old gaming. We're going to take it back and we're, we're, we're going to do a throwback because we're all gamers around here. A little bit, mm. some of us, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, just a little. I dabble, you know. For you old heads, you're gonna appreciate what I'm what I'm about to say. For you young heads, it's called a PlayStation Two. Have you heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> some of your favorite streamers have not. <laughs> Dude, it still hurts me that some of the VTubers that I watch, one in particular, uh, she had no clue what a PlayStation 2 was, and mm. I felt a piece of my heart just shatter. Because it, it, it's such a classic gaming console from the sleek look, the the lettering of the PlayStation 2, the fucking dark and light blue PS2 on the side of it in oh, like yeah. cybernetic writing. Oh, that the startup iconic, noise. I was just about the to say the startup iconic noise. startup noise. That's how if iconic it is. Ooh. If you're not if you're not ready for it, uh, you were gonna go deaf. You were going to wake up your parents <laughs> in the middle of the night. Just letting you know right now. Like you could not sneak playing that console <laughs> for shit. I tried to. Like I did all I took all the precautions of like I put a towel down uh, like around the bottom of the door so that way mom couldn't see the light from my TV peering in. I put I moved my dresser and put my lamp so I wait uh she couldn't see through the t- uh, through the top of the door. Covered myself with a blanket and I was like, okay, time to be as quiet as possible. Turn it on. <laughs> the fuck was that? God damn it. No, ground yeah. <laughs> God, the yeah. PlayStation 2, what an iconic console. So I'll ask you this and I'll, and I'll start over here. You had your PS2. It's a Saturday morning. You got nothing going on. What are we playing? Oh man, that's a lot. That's a loaded question. There's so many. Um, I think when it came to just most memorable, me and my friends sitting around, hanging out Saturday morning or afternoon, or whatever, and we're playing just pre- like offline custom game. It's time spitters, preferably the third one. Oh my god, it was so much fun! Endless f- fucking times of d- content. The um, the I would say the editing, the map maker, how much shit you can do with like the modes, how customizable they were. It it was just insane for the game way back then, and just so much fun. Us, like me or two other friends, 3v like 12 bots on like the smallest map in in the game, or even one smaller that we (laughs) made or something. I don't know. Most iconic would be the desert map. Oh, so fun. Hours of just laughs. I loved that game so much. Oh, yeah. Time Splitters is an iconic piece that. I know is in a lot of a lot of gamers. I'd, I'd I'd say a good top ten games that they could reminisce and would love to play. Number one's always going to go to Skyrim because for some reason there's still to this day people going back for their fourteenth run through of Skyrim. But we're not here for Skyrim. Sorry, Todd. Love you, really, Dad. Um, but Time Splitters is a very 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 solid story. I think Time Splitters is is fucking excellent. All right, so then if we swivel down here, Saturday morning, you got through the WB cartoons, Moochie Lucha and all that. It's time to game. 
What okay. Are we up? Okay. Okay. Um, there were so many good options back in the day, and if I didn't have anything planned, I didn't have anybody coming over. My go-to solo game was definitely the Tony Hawk series. And I'm talking Ooh. Thug 1, Thug 2. And at the end, when the era was closing, American Wasteland was a masterpiece. The <laughs> OST, the locales, the celebrity cameos. <sighs> ah. Dude, the OST was sick, especially oh, yeah. like from from silly uh, from silly th- uh, silly songs like uh I like Dirt by the Thunderlords. Yeah, sen- Census Fails cover of Institutionalized, made famous by Suicidal Tendencies. Hey. Uh, Sorry. What, what about um, uh, California Uber Alice? Oh, that's what got me on to Dead Kennedys. <laughs> I want to sing it, but DMAC, you know. Nah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The hood is hard. The hood is hard. I want to. I'm gonna. If he has it, I'm gonna sing that tonight at karaoke. As of this recording is Saturday, I'm gonna go singing later on. And I'm gonna sing my voice box off because I sing horribly, Check but him still. Out. But any of these songs that I've mentioned, especially you like, uh, like weird rock music such as the Thunderlords, they have some. They have some gems. Census Fail is a classic emo screamo band from my era of of uh, of emo, going back to two thousand, like two thousand and six, two thousand and seven era. And Dead Kennedys are just a good fucking band. Who'd have thought they could get famous with the name The Dead Kennedys? For I've heard worse. Oh, yeah, there's definitely worse. Every black oh, metal definitely and, worse. Like, porno grind band ever. I was just thinking Kitty. That's not like a rock band name. True. Yeah, true. But I'm saying Dead Kennedy since, they, since there's two presidents that were shot and killed that are both named Kennedy. That's pretty punk, though. That is. You can't tell me that's not punk. punk. Shit. <laughs> it's very punk. <laughs> it's very punk. And I love the fact that you brought up American Wasteland right there because a lot of people give American uh, American Wasteland shit. Like, besides the whole, there's no loading screens. No, there was a loading screen, Tony. I'm sorry, but at least it loaded faster than the other two games. It was way faster, like one fifth of the time. Oh yeah, I just love how I'm watching the bar fill up, and I'm like, oh, it's gonna get to the end. It's gonna get to the end. Nope. By George, he was right. <sighs> We need to hire this man. But then I also loved, like you said, they brought in a bunch of a bunch of cameos. And one of my favorite ones was actually Rick Thorne, a BMX biker. Mm-hmm. That guy has he, so much charisma. Holy hell, man. He's funny. He lives out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, the best ever, that's the best venture we had since that night. And TJ, woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you do this one trick, I'll give you all the money in my pocket. Trust me, I got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's actually like that as a human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, it's like he, they, dude, hmm? go, sorry, go, go ahead. Go. I was I was gonna say he feels like what the Tony Hawk games are good at making these exaggerated characters unbelievable. He just lives like that. He just drops in with like the super hippie version of Mira and all the other pro skaters and icons that they drop in there. Mm-hmm. Like. I could just imagine when they probably put him in a sound booth to record his lines. He was just like, hey, so there's no script here. What do you guys want me to say? Yes. 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 We're going to ask you a couple of questions. Head. Shoot from the hip. <laughs> if I do a trick, would you give me money? Uh, the money in your pocket? Oh, yeah, I'll give you all the money in my pocket. And I got a lot. Exact. Nailed it. Use take two. And I loved the whole... The, the, map, the map was massive but it wasn't stopped by a loading wall it was you could you could go from one area to the next to the next to the next completely continuous outside of a select uh, outside of a select year but that it was just one ginormous map and from back yeah, then it, that was impressive massively yeah so there are some games now that don't do that looking at you EA <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, but it was, it was it was cutting edge, and then to boot because I know I, I know I started jumping on the old American Wasteland dick. Um, Thug One and Thug Two, Tony Hawk's Underground One and Two are possibly some of my favorite games in the in the PS2 era. Like 
the fact that you can customize your character, which I always built, I always went with the shirtless Chad character, but then I gave him the skull with the dual mohawks. All right, all right. So what uh, what, what is your character looking like? Is he going to be a fat hippie from like skate, or you making this dude no, look, I, look, look like a rocker? I have the same character on the Tony Hawk's Underground, the remaster for the Xbox. Yeah, I still have to buy that. So. Oh, that's fun. Okay. So khaki pants, skate flats, gray button up with none of the buttons done, white beater underneath, solid white eyes, white mohawk. Oh, nice. Yeah, we got that East LA vibe going for sure. <laughs> so then that begs the question, since we since we I'm assuming you guys have played skate, right? Like, yes, yeah, like of course. Yeah. Games. So especially playing the the new remastered Tony Hawk game. What was the biggest hurdle, if there was any, going from like we had to do all these in, like intricate button presses to do these tricks on on Thug to just right well uh, right thumbstick flicks on skate? Was there was there like a was there like a skill gap going back to having to do mm. intricate button presses? Get, because get Brandon first. <laughs> all right. Because I'm thinking to myself when I'm watching some of these people play, I'm like, if I go onto this and I've been used to just thumb flicks for the past ten years, I'm gonna drown. So, what was your biggest hurdle, if there was one? Um, honestly, I would probably say that I didn't really have that much of a hurdle because, for some reason, I was never all that good with the skate thumb flick or whatever. I actually had an easier time with the the bun combos on Tony Hawk. Okay, I think that just kind of comes with me playing a lot of the like the hack and slash combo games. Like most notably, Devil May Cry. Like I am, I'm very good at memorizing those combos, so I was able to just get it down real easy. All I really needed to do was work out timing, but other than that, that's it. Okay. Okay, okay, I can see, I can see that. Because the, the first thing that sticks out to me is uh, something simple as a kick flip. In skate, it was just a on the right thumbstick, down flick, and then flick slightly up to the right. And for Tony Hawk, it was press the X button to jump, and then square, and then left on the D-pad. Mm. Yeah. I remember that all these years later. Jesus. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's playing like three days ago. I, I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> Okay, so then was there was there any sort of skill gap? Did, was there some some sort of getting used to going from Thug to Skate back to essential uh, essential New Age Thug? Not at all, because when I was young, we my parents loved to get bargain bin games for me because they didn't know anything about them. If there, if it was five dollars, all right, it's five dollars. He either loves it or hates it. We'll try it. And they found one gem, one gem that is so hard to get a hold of these days. But if you guys could find it. It's called Super Yan Yan Calabrista Street Skating. The craziest Japanese skating game you've ever heard of because it in the prime era of the PS2, it came with a little tech deck with no trucks that had suction oh. cups that stick over your thumbsticks. And you had to skate to do the tricks in the game with the little tech deck. Yep, I know what you're talking about. So I played that for a long time. Uh, I had fun with that. I and when Skate came out, I'd already had I knew how to do everything. It's just oh, can Calibrista was just years ahead of its time, but it was so obscure and underground, nobody knew about it. And I was ready. I was tearing up Skate when those games first came out. And one of my biggest gaming regrets is trading in Super Yanya and Calibrista. Uh, the only thing that makes it not that bad is because the guy I sold it to bought it under the counter of Game Crazy. They're out of business. He's not going to get in trouble. He bought it under the counter for me in cash and gave me a little extra, and he made his own tech deck with some duct tape and a, uh old busted controller. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Dude. So at least it went to somebody who appreciates it. He probably still has it, if we're being honest, but I, I miss it, man. I would love to get my hands on a copy of that these days. Oh, yeah, dude. If anybody knows... Shout it out, please. Amazon, probably. Hands see, are down. That, I'm getting my phone. <laughs> see, that's why Amazon right now. See, that's why I love, uh, like, I love the the skateboarding games. I think the skateboarding games were. 
<laughs> immaculate, really. Um, because I love that they just brought to light this whole new era of okay, it doesn't need to be a first person shooter, it doesn't need to be a hack and slash. Let's just create something where it's an extreme sport, but it's casual. Like, even though, even though I love skate, but and I'm gonna go back even older than, than the PS2, but. That blue cartridge, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for for Nintendo 64. That was just the game where I could just hop on and, and bull for forever. Like I, there was no objective. I just loved doing tricks. Only time I was really trying is if I was wanting to do the orange tricks, where the orange letters would pop up and you'd get that sound that you did an epic trick. Y'all remember? Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I have the remaster. I love that game. I have the original too. Yeah, that I love the rematch, dude. This is making me want to go play it again. Same. I kind of want to de- get download the fucking the Pro Skater remaster now. I'm probably gonna do that. I'm I'm gonna do that. All right. Yeah. Sorry. But before I do that, it is my turn. Saturday morning. Cartoons are cartoons are done. Mom's in the kitchen with her uh, with her with her gal pals. Dad's fucking off into the garage. It goes down to one of two games, and it's all depending on if my brother's there or not. Uh, my brother's not there. I know a lot of people's go-to answers would be like Jack, uh, like Jack and Dax, and all that. Great games, but my go-to was Killzone. Yes, Killzone was my shit. I loved the vocal lines of when you were slaughtering people, especially some of their distorted voices were great. Fuck out. I loved every single minute of Killzone. I don't know why, especially for peak gaming back in the day. That that would be a game, if my mom saw that I had it and was playing it, she would have been like, fork it over. No, that's going, that's going in the cabinet. But then if my brother is home, our go-to, which I still have to this day, I can say my possession currently is Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Oh yeah, that's a good game right there, dude! Masterpiece, masterpiece, absolute masterpiece. You mean to tell me you Mortal Kombat decided, hey, so we're not going to make an arena style fighter where the goal is to beat your opponent's ass? We're going to make a co op campaign game centered around two people. Yo, Mortar, wow! (laughs) He found it. (laughs) I found it. Oh, your uh, your skateboarding one? Yeah, sick. I don't need to find Killzone. I have it. Come over and play, DJ. Dude, Dude. Kill Killzone and Metal of Honor are the reason why I'm such a big FPS nerd now. Metal of Honor is the game that I would play with my style with my step he, He's God a damn. he's a war buff. He lo- like he loves that shit. So then, um, you guys have played Challenge Box, right? Oh, of course. It, uh, right, so, how many times? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So, that of, yeah. so that of the two, who 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 are you guys picking? Because I was a, I was a Kung Lao man. I love Kung Lao with everything in me. I, uh, it's kind of hard to remember because I did play both of them a lot. Um, I probably just go with the class of Liu Kang. I always liked Liu Kang, even in the regular Mortal Kombat games. Solid, solid, solid. Liu Kang, bro, we throw fireballs in here. This is Mortal Kombat. Yeah! <laughs> yes. I think it's just the fact that I could do so many tricks with, with Kung Lao's hat that I, that I went with Kung Lao. But I love the fact that you could find all these different fatalities and brutalities and animalities mm-hmm. as long as you could put in the combination in the two seconds that they gave you. Just like, all right, fatality. <laughs> yeah, if you fucked it up, they didn't die. And they actually get a free hit on you. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a uh, punishing. Honestly, at times. I don't want to even, but they don't need to make a new one. What they need to do is just remaster the old one and just give it to us, bro. I don't want them to fuck it up with a new one because nowadays I don't trust sequels to games from like way back. Just remaster yeah. it, touch it up, just give it to us how it was, just look prettier. <laughs> I will say this much as much as I agree, I will counter with this if you if they were to just remaster it to make you look print and beautiful and pretty i'd want an expansion of different characters 
because I'd love to have like it's still Shaolin monks, but instead of Kung Lao and Liu Kang, now you have Kano and Sub Zero doing the story. Or that would, that, would be, that would be awesome. Yeah, just have different characters like. <clears throat> You put on the other duo, Sub Zero and Scorpion, that has like another playable, like co op characters, or like you said, Kano, or I don't know, it's throwing Baraka or something, you know? I'd love two characters. Kano's that friends with actual... Aaron Black. Sorry, Aaron, we're on that nerd over here. Right. See, I would love I to, to know, have, especially, <laughs> especially they got their own voice lines, I'd love to pit together two characters that in lore don't get along with each other. So Kano and anybody but Aaron Black. <laughs> Kano yeah. and Sonya. <laughs> oh my god. <gosh. laughs> That'd be a travesty. <laughs> I'd throw it out. Or what they could do it, if we want to take it a step further is instead this, do the whole remaster, but if they wanted to do something new, do like a whole different campaign but with other characters with that you know same premise. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like why I said if we, if they were to get like make a new game, keep the same like keep the same parameters of it's a co op campaign game, but switch it up a bit. Make the make the campaign a little bit more broad because the main thing there is the fighting aspect, and then you have all these arrays of characters, and then especially Mortal Kombat, you guys have been doing well with this, bringing in special characters. Because I would love to see Raiden and uh, the Terminator uh, just going around <laughs> whooping ass. I would love to hear how that conversation is going to go down. Dude, Jackson Robocop, that would be a lot of fun. Yo. <laughs> Robocop takes alive. one look at Jackson. You're coming Robocop. with us. <laughs> Robocop takes one look at Jackson. He goes, that's it? Just arms? Wow. Have you played the new game? Well, 11? Yeah. Outside of the one tournament that we did? Uh, no. That was oh, 10. Oh, well, I, I also beat the <laughs> No, we, we did one tournament with 11 because I played the campaign. Uh, no. Uh, because he kept on picking, not Cyrax. Noob. I think it was Smoke. Yeah, it's a Noob Cybot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, Corner Trap. Hard, oh, yeah, hard. I play. yeah, I didn't care. Noob, noob after 45 minutes, boy. after 45 minutes, my thumbs were just starting to hurt. And I was like, I feel bad for my X button because that's all I pressed. Because <laughs> I'm <laughs> dumb. <laughs> You'd be yeah, good so at that... KI. You'd be really good at Killer Instinct. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah pick it was. up, man. No, I'll, I, I'll, I'll teach I used you. To, I used to play Killer Instinct. I was either. Uh, Why would you play Killer Instinct? Oh, because like around the time is uh, this is around the time when uh, a certain other uh, character that we uh, that we used to play video games with, he would oh, always pick Saber guy. Wolf, and he had he had his con- he had did he you had just his fucking bark? Oh, yeah, you just yeah, I know that exactly. Guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's either the, he's either Saber Wolf or Arbiter. That's all it was. And no matter who I picked, he was able to battle back and, and keep battling me. Granted, I still love the whole the announcer couldn't get one sentence in edge uh, like edgewise. It was like combo break, c- 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 combo break, ultra breaker. This dude's about to run Shout out. out we, need to, we need to let this man talk. No, this is KI. We do all the moves. He will die on this hill. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I didn't know that that game was actually that old and that retro because in that Killer Instinct bundle that I bought, you could actually buy uh, a. You can actually yeah. get yeah. And I'm like, oh, so this game goes back. Jago yeah. looks weird. Cool. Finals always been cool. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, speaking speaking of Marine Style Fighters, and I already brought up uh, uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow Realms. Wait, hold on. Was 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 MK9 on PS2, or was that or is that just a PS3 and Xbox 360? Three and 360. Shit. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Just past the presented era. Fuck. Sorry, sorry. You're a very good game, though. You are you are a fantastic game. All right. So then let's kick uh, let's kick this over to you. Um, if you could have one of those games, one of you, one of your most iconic PS2 games, 
remastered and reincarnated to be as bold and brash and beautiful as we've been getting kind of on uh, over here on Xbox and PC, what would you want to bring back? Man, 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 man. I, I'm really torn because I have one I'd love to have brought back, but I don't think anybody else would. It was super niche and super specific. Uh, have you guys ever heard of a game called Second Sight? Yes. Yes. Actually. I'm shocked. Dude, this is a first. Every time everyone's like, no, I had fucking Ratchet and Clank, you told. And I'm like, fine. Fuck. <laughs> I've heard of it. San Andreas Pleb. I've heard of it, but I never actually got to play it. I named my baby CJ. What about you, DJ? Ever play it? I vaguely remember playing it, but you gotta remember how old I am. We're not that far. You know what? I'm not doing that right now. Um, <laughs> three years apart, my dude. It's not a decade. Anyways. I thought it was only two years. 29. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so. That game is really wild, and the long and short run of it is it plays like Splinter Cell, but you have psychic abilities. The plot follows you going up to help the CIA on a mission. You're a specialist. The mission goes completely tits up, and it's you trying to rebuild your memory because you wake up in a coma several months later with psychic powers, and you're haggard, covered in wounds head to toe. Your team's been disbanded. Everyone, All the paperwork's buried, and it's you trying to use your powers to uncover the mystery. And it is so much fun. It is insane. It's Sam Fisher, but you can throw people with your mind. You said that it's called Silent Sight? Second Sight. Oh, Second Sight. Because that reminds me of another game similar on the PS2 era called PsyOps, the Mind Gate Conspiracy. You essentially, same, same concept, except I think you were at a mm-hmm. testing facility you end up gaining all these different types of powers from uh, essentially just different forms of telekinesis, whether you want to throw people or throw things or throw things at people. Mm. And at the same time, there's also puzzles that you have to solve using your psychic powers. And I I I remember that game. That was the more cartoony version. Second Sight was like Splinter Cell 2, hyper-realistic, have to use stealth. It, It was punishing, difficult. And I think with the modern community, like Elden Ring players would love something like that. It's like, oh, man, I got to take down a whole SWAT team with only this much psychic meter, a 22 and a police baton I found in the dumpster. A 22 that has (laughs) three shells in it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like, okay, I can make something happen. It's going to be janky. Don't mind me, I have to reach because I just realized I left on. I left my Xbox turned on. I'm a professional. Hi, how's everybody doing? Um, yeah. So I, again, it reminded me of PsyOp, and now I have to now I have to look back and I really I really want to get all these games now. Son of a bitch. Next time I go, I go to a convention. I'm going straight to dealer's room to see if they if they're selling PS2s. I don't care what they cost. I want one. I want another one. I want it back immediately. All right, shifting down. Over here, eat, eat. Yes, yes, yes. If you buy one, let me know. I know where to get a uh, look away. I know where to get a modded hard drive <laughs> online, so you can have like 250 games on it, and it is a three minute install. It's so easy. Ooh. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All. <laughs> It reminds me of another game that I'm pretty sure nobody's going to uh, know but me because I, for some reason I had all these niche fucking games. But before I do that, you over here, one PS2 game that could be remastered and made beautimized and optimized and any other eyes, that means it's a pretty game. On the premise of they don't touch the, the original storyline or the characters or anything like that, just a graphics remaster, beautifully 4K Ultra HD remaster. What are we looking at? Huh. Well, um, there are so many. Fuck. Um, I'm gonna have to just pick one because th- there have been a lot that I've played, and some even recent. 
Mikey will probably like this one. I would probably have to go with the mm-hmm. original Fear. Yo. <clears throat> you, you, you say something, dude? I just said very good choice. Fear, Fear was a great game. It was weird. Because I didn't jump in at Fear 1. I, I For some reason, I started at Fear 3. Don't ask me The best me one. one. Oh, yeah, it, it was damn good. When I started was, realizing and understanding what I was doing. Let me correct myself before somebody yells at me. It was the best one for people to get into at because it moved quickly and it worked well. <laughs> yeah. It was still terrifying. But <laughs> Fear 1 and 2 would fuck your dreams up when you were 12. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could only imagine the scenes of Fear One and Two, but made in like friggin' new, like graphics, four K, sixty frames. Oh my god! Can we get that in Unreal Engine Five, please? Please, <laughs> please. I would love that. See, and I wish they would do horror games like that because horror games now, like horror, like horror games now. Let's be real here, kind of. Mid. Mid. Like, I think, like, Evil Within was moderately decent. I think because that was even the though, last great hit, for sure. And yeah. even then, I think it was just because, like, the game, the like, the campaign was gripping. Like, it was such a good fucking story. Oh, it was absolutely fucking fantastic. And I would love another genuinely good horror game. Outside of the creepy pasta shit that you can find on Steam, in which case, watch your keystrokes. You'll end up somewhere where you don't want to be. Ow. Okay, so then, uh, so you would say fear. You would go with uh, second sight. Yeah, second sight. I was gonna leave him hanging. <laughs> I, for me, this one's gonna this one's gonna come out of left field. Uh, actually, for me, I would want another uh, Quidditch World Cup. Uh, okay, oh, I'll give you okay. that. Oh, that yeah. was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was the first video game where I was actually playing with my family. Like, I'm talking because my mom is one of the biggest, still to this day, one of the biggest Harry Potter nuts of all fucking time. And even she was having fun playing this goddamn game. And I love that once you once you surpass the whole playing Quidditch for the four main houses, then you actually go on and actually use different countries or different schools around, well, uh, the quote unquote world, the Harry Potter universe of of, of wizardry, and you're and you're playing Quidditch against all, all these other people. So you score a goal that whoever scored it has their own custom way of showing off and taunting. Like one of the guys, I forgot what country he's from. I know, don't, 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 don't crucify me. But he was of of Asian culture, and as soon as he scores, he just stands up on his broom and he's just ah, yeah, like okay, that's a thing that's happening. Sick, this is awesome. I would love to bring that back, but I also love for them to implement an actual multiplayer. To that, because I would yeah. love to go head. I'd love to go head to head with the motherfucker Dude, in Quidditch. Three v threes in Quidditch, bruh. Um, like somebody's the some. I like just until I dip my feet in. I'll I'll be the keeper. I don't give a damn. You guys can choose who who's gonna be the beater and who's gonna go for the snitch when it's time. And that's not a question. That's gonna be lizard reflexes over there. Hi. Uh. This man's eighty, like ADD, is gonna kick in so hard. Just sitting still, then I see it. <laughs> it's, it's gonna look like a Chuck Norris scene where he's looking that way and it just Wada! and he catches it out of the air. <laughs> Did you drop this? Catches it out of the air, then ow! ow. Found it. Mike drops. <laughs> <laughs> see that, that, and again, I thought Quidditch. I wish they implemented it more into the into the Harry Potter movies because I thought Quidditch was so fun to watch, and then the fact that they made a game, either remaster it or make another one, dude. Like, please, you don't understand how underrated yet also how goaded Quidditch was on mm-hmm. that fucking game. I think that game made a lot of people have more appreciation for Quidditch because, fun fact, here where I live. There's people that have actually created an actual Quidditch sport where they it, essentially it's 
it's uh, a mixture of rugby, uh, lacrosse, and soccer. And it's their rendition of Quidditch. You have to actually ride on a broom and then run around doing shit. Um. Yeah. That's what Quidditch did to these people. Respect. Yeah, yeah you're never going to get me on, on a broom to do that. But, you know, respect to people for in what they like to do in their free time. Sure. No, but that's respect. what Quidditch did. But that's what Quidditch did for some of these people. So that's why I say bring it back and do another one. I would love to play it again. I would love to team up with you and then watch you whoop ass while I just defend the goal until I'm comfortable. The best defense is good offense. Woo! <laughs> just committing fouls all day. I can picture if, like, if we were actually playing Quidditch, if we were actually in the Harry Potter universe playing Quidditch, first thing I'm picturing is Fraser jumping off his broom just to spear tackle somebody to the ground. <laughs> Sorry, uh, he's from the Australian team. They play rugby. <laughs> 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 just, hey! <laughs> no skills are the reason there's flags in Quidditch now. <laughs> foul. <laughs> Personal foul. Flag they thrown. Implement- why they implement like red cards in Quidditch? Uh, ask Frazier. Apparently, they don't like <laughs> you stone cold stunning students from four hundred feet up. I just thought of uh, ha- uh, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I hold two trophies. I was the first guy to take my skate off and try to stab somebody with it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's gonna be us. Yeah, that was the first person to use their broom as a bludgeoning weapon on the other team. No, just the little bats that the beaters get, and then you're just like going around mercilessly hitting people with them. <laughs> Think fast. Breaks through. Like, I'm going to see the enemy guy who's going for the snitch. All right, I'm just going to post right here. Here he comes. Here he comes. No, see, everything's casual. Bam! Nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Did those Quidditch players come out with their own team mouth guards? Yep. <laughs> Keep an eye out for them. Why do they have to wear cups while they're flying? Just watch what they do. Just keep an eye, keep an eye on their defense. <laughs> we don't have an agents. organized. We don't have an organized uniform. It's just pieces of scrap metal from Mad Max. <laughs> it's leather armor. <laughs> it's scrap armor from Seven Days to Die. Anyway, uh, right. I was actually gonna. Throw. I thought he. I thought he would have gotten that one. Oh, I did, I did. But I also want to throw out a different game. Um, So, a game I would actually love for them to at least, at least remaster. I don't think they can do it justice as like an actual remake anymore. Considering the newer games of this type just don't live up to how much fun these were. But specifically, I would want to throw out ATV Off-Road Fury 2. Number two, <laughs> because number oh, man, dude, part two was so fucking fun. There was so much shit you could do, so much customizing your character, your bike, so many the maps, so many modes. The OST bank. The OST was amazing. <laughs> oh my god! Hell, even number one's OST was awesome. I'll give you that. That was that's how I got introduced to freaking System of a Down before we even listened to rock science. Before we even listened to rock, I was like, "Oh, that's a good song." You sure they had oh, yes. Mudvayne too? Yeah, they had Mudvayne. I think they had Duality from Slipknot. <laughs> um, they just had a bunch of just random songs that were popping at the time, and of course, I wasn't a rock listener to them at the time because. I was just a kid. I was listening to rap and hip hop until like later on in my life. Now <laughs> listening to these bands, I'm like, oh shit, I remember that song. That was an ATV off Road Fury. We made the right decision. <laughs> next time next time my mom questions me, like, where did your musical interests and taste go wrong, child? I'm just gonna pull out like a framed copy of it and be like blame <laughs> right here. Right here. <laughs> It's, this is also the reason I'm so good at Rainbow Six Siege. This right here, <laughs> the skills directly translate. <laughs> See, uh, I love when we when we all said we want ATV off Road Fury three, and then they're just like, "We got you." MX versus ATV. This sucks. Not, no, it does. No. Then they took away hockey. 
Remember playing uh, hockey on the fucking like, ATVs? Oh, that was just <laughs> jokes, dude. Dude, those custom the custom games were fucking sick, dude. Yeah, uh, Lucio Ball awesome. in 1998, right there. That's what that was. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yeah. Look at the uh, soundtrack was great. The everything was great. Oh, what were you gonna say? Even if you were by yourself, which was mostly the case when I was playing it at the time, it was just fun to play. Solo, just go on to random maps, go free roam, just do tricks, do I don't know, crash into shit. I don't know, go to the edge of the map, and all of a sudden you just go zoom, flying through the air. Something just knocks you all the way back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, re- it reminded me of uh, before. I think the game was Burnout, where they had custom games, where essentially <laughs> yes, it's it was. To- how can you yeah. abuse your driver today? Uh, there was that crash mode, demo derby, battle, and then the destroyer race where you had lives and you had to finish the race or defeat all your opponent's lives. Mm. Oh, that was fun. I, I love doing that mode. Hey, Internet. It's me, DJ. 2023, new year, new me. And you know what that means. New things in stock right now on W's website. They got hats. They got pants. They got shirts. They got flags. And W just dropped a brand new flavor. Blue Raz. Mm, the name alone sounds good. So if you are trying to get your hands on some of this awesome swag, head on over to W.GG and use our code NSE for 10% off your total order. Thank you for listening. And remember, be better. With Dubby. I, I, again, I want them to bring to bring that shit back, but instead they gave us uh, Burnout Reve- uh, Burnout Paradise. Was it Burnout Paradise oh. or Burnout Revenge? It was Burnout, Burnout Revenge was the Revenge. good one on the PS2. Yeah. Burnout Paradise was the Xbox port where they used all the money to get to get royalties for Paradise City, which good song, but damn you, Guns N' Roses. Instead of the cars, so you can't get a Nissan GTR. You could get a Nassan GTS. You can't get a Shelby Mustang. You can get a Carol. Uh, what is it? What is it? Stallion. Different word for car or for horse. So, yeah. So they spend more money on the songs than the actual naming licenses for the damn cars. And they didn't look like the cars. They were close, but they weren't right. And then yeah. they didn't handle right. They were. It's a, it was an arcade racer. I'm getting way too emotional. I'm, I apologize. I love the Burnout no, franchise. No, dude, I get Great it, bro. I loved Burnout too. And I, I was sad. I was sad, man. Great. And how could uh, not not to not to shit on Paradise, even though it was a keep of you know. Um, it was if I if if memory serves correctly, it was one of the original launch release games for Xbox 360. Like it was one of the first games on yeah. Xbox 360. Yeah. It was one of the hype titles, and fuck, it was a pile of dog shit. Just a bit of a letdown. I have 80% of that game complete, and that was because I played it while my internet was down, and that was all I had. Man, I could tell you everything wrong with that game in a three-page, well-written, documented essay. And (laughs) the fact that they put a burnout title on it infuriates me. That and the new Need for Speed. The new Need for Speed graphics are so bad. There's mods to take off the animations because they are in the way of a racing game where you need to see what you're driving towards. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, I don't had... care what shitty rapper you put on the title. Sorry, well, Brandon. Oh, bro, I was going to say, I had more fun on the remake of Most Wanted than I had on Paradise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And most, the Most Wanted thing wasn't even that like crazy. Well, not even that innovative, I'm going to be honest. It was just you going from place to place, race to race, and that was it. Yep. <laughs> there was no That works. Because you're Barely, racing real cars. Yeah, racing real cars. You had to go and find the cars to use them. But other than that, there's like barely any story. Most of the time, you just ignore whatever the hell is happening over that radio or whatever walkie-talkie or phone. And you're just going from race to race, just racing everything. That's it. Um, I have, I have a question for you guys. It's not old video game related, but do you have the Need for Speed for the Xbox? The one that's just Need for Speed with the uh, Magnus, Ken yeah. Block, Morihoshi, Nakai-san? Yeah. No, but I 
I I can get it. The one thing I was gonna get is Hot Pursuit because I Hot Pursuit's my favorite. Uh, it's actually NFS a lot game. of fun. I'll give you I that. Love Hot that one's a blast. I heard the oh, new the was, new like new new Need for Speed's actually pretty good. Apparently, that's the one they gave that made mods so you can take all the bullshit graphics off so you can actually play the game. <laughs> <laughs> that actually reminds me, I want to tell you, boys, because I got an email about this as of this recording yesterday, that they finally, finally, finally released Hot Wheels Unleashed, and it's on Game Pass. No, I'm, okay. down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. So down. So down. It's studded. So did. But yeah, I think, I, especially when it came to the PS2, I think that was like... One of the, well, between the PS2 and the PS3, that was like the, the pinnacle time to get into racing games because of like all the need for speeds that were that were coming out. And uh, again, my favorite one's Hot Pursuit. I love the fact that randomly when I'm doing some of these uh, these driving missions, I start getting chased by a fucking Lamborghini cop, and my job is to outrun him and not get EMP twenty thousand times. If it was not Hot Pursuit, it was uh, Most Wanted for me. Most wanted was good. Most wanted was very good. I think I, I now, love Hapasu more, but I have more time on Most Wanted. Weirdly enough, I don't know. Hmm. It was, it was just one I, of those I, weird things. I just need to get back into racing games. To be, to be brutally honest, I I miss racing games. Oh, I'm, I just I love them. I'm, I suck at them, but I love them. Like when I started making oh, the racing games, did we you had, get we me had, last time? Didn't you get me last time when we did the mega race? I mean, yeah, the the one time. <laughs> That's something. That's, That's something. Because you gotta understand, audience. This guy and his brother, they they're just stupid when it comes to like either fighting games or racing games. It's hard as shit to beat these fuckers. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, one. cars are kind of what I do. It pays yeah, exactly. for my bills. Exactly. All my shit. Like I, I, I kind of have an idea of how a power to weight ratio works, how so, weight transfer so works, how spring go, stiffness works, all that nonsense. So if you want to play something like Forza, don't expect to win because this guy knows what the fuck to do <laughs> with that car. Unless like I'm in my go. 86. Not the, not the old one, the new one, because I want an FRS. I don't give a shit. I know it's a slow car. I know I'm not winning the race, but I spent eight hours making a Gengar rat for it, so I'm driving it. I'm driving it, god damn it. It's his face on the hood, and the doors are his two claws coming out at you. See, and I, that's the part that I was about to bring up, is like, what made me fall off of racing games, because I can admit this, I'm not ashamed. I know next to Zilch about cars and how to fix them up and tune them, and I blame Need for Speed Carbon for when they... Uh, implemented that i'm like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing all i know is this thing apparently needs to be able to drift oh that's the nice thing much like real life you could buy tunes from other people now so you don't need to do it yourself you'd be like i want this horsepower eighty thousand in game points done i did that on forza horizon 4 i turned my i actually got a lamborghini on the on the lotto wheel surprisingly enough and then I and then I bought a I bought some what was the highest letter what was it uh, was it X tier X X yeah I just bought I bought an, an S uh, an X tier build slapped it on my Lambo won a won a shit ton of races with it and I'm like this is cheating okay people do that in real life though yeah people do that in real life and if you're that dude fuck you um <laughs> <laughs> if you are said hombre we're talking about. Fuck yourself. It, yeah, I have I have opinions on cars. He did deep opinions on cars. But again, that's why yeah. I loved the race uh, the racing game era of, P, of P, like I said between PS2 and PS3, but mainly PS2. It was it was fantastic. But speaking of racing, one game that did stick out to me. I don't know if it impacted you guys the same way it did with me, but I fell in love with SSX. The snowboarding oh, game yes. was my shit. Yes, as yeah. such was really fun, and I think that's why I really wanted. Um, what was that? Uh, that was a Ubisoft game that came out recently that had the snowboarding and the biking and all that. It's like something Republic. Uh, Riders, Riders Republic. Republic. Riders you, Republic. You, you uploaded a video of it without any spaces in between the words. 
Yeah, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> this game was so fun. Drago had to tear himself. This game was so fun. Drago had to tear himself away from playing it just to edit. Yeah, look it up. No, it, was, it, it was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. I think nowadays there's barely anyone on it, but like I literally yeah, just means- got on it just for snowboarding. And I had a lot of fun for it on it, dude. Yeah, so that that thing kind of blew it blew its jersey load a little too quickly. Because I understand what they were going for, especially with care like one hundred percent character customization. But this is the first time I'm ever gonna say this. It was too much. There was so much shit going on from like snowboarding to biking to i think there was skateboarding in there to win uh, to wingsuit flying i'm like holy hell and then you had to actually go to eat kind of like forza you had to drive to each fucking destination like you had to travel there yep Hon- honestly i actually liked that portion of it because i think having all that there means that you just had a lot to do and a lot you can do that you had something to work towards there was even challenges that if you completed, you get uh, like an exclusive item that you can like get from that challenge. And I think it was really good. And I love the premise of an open world game. You can just run into random players while you're out doing whatever you're doing, whether you're snowboarding down the mountain or like dirt, using the dirt bike over like sand dunes or whatever. You can run into players and I, I don't know, like I don't know what happened to that game. I think it was the case of there was a lot to do, but once people were certain like putting a certain amount of, amount of hours, it all felt the same. I'm also gonna it chalk got it up too to... boring too quickly. I'm also gonna chalk it up to I think as soon as people heard snowboarding and well, nothing against SSX on the 360, I think that was like SSX tricky or some shit like that. Yeah. The game was a wee bit of a letdown, so part of me felt like this was going to be people's, uh, you know, nostalgia burn of I can play a snowboarding game again, and then once I get my fill, I can backburner this. Because again, going back to when I was playing SSX, a I got another 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 fucking banger OST. I, I the uh, the SSX that I'm thinking of is what got me onto Iron Maiden. I was playing on repeat, run to the hills while snowboarding downhill, <laughs> and it's because of that song that Bruce Dickinson still to this day and until the remainder of time uh, will always be my top five favorite frontman of any band ever. Bruce Dickinson is the fucking man. Frontman, author, pilot. He does it all. <laughs> the, the, the dude, is, he does it all. It starts listing off frontman, author, pilot, Michelin chef. He flies the band to each show on the tour and then performs the show. The man is a unit. Straight up. <laughs> Without Screw jet lag. Jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> the band exists only in jet lag. <laughs> One day it will catch up and kill him, but not today. Run, run to the emodium. I'm getting motion sickness. Sorry, mm-hmm. but yeah. But I, I, I want to see more of those, like, like extreme sports games. Again, nothing against Riders Republic, but I would love another just straight SSX title. Right. Well, uh, that's the issue. A... a lot of those old old franchises owned to different companies who have been bought, sold, traded. It's a needle in a haystack to find who has what. There's also the fact that nowadays a lot of games are looking more towards be- looking and feeling as realistic as possible nowadays. There's very rare you find a game that is just trying to be a game. I think Need for Speed's heading that way. Yeah, I'm Need not for happy S- about it. Need for Speed's heading that way. Um, I don't know. I think we just need a lot more of the arcadey, just have fun type of games because everything nowadays is trying to be a little too realistic with everything. We already have two Last of Us. That's enough. Like, like for example, it just came out recently. 
um, Hi-Fi Rush is literally just an arcadey, cartoony, hack and slash rhythm game, and it's just fun. That's just it. It's enough. It's just fun. It's not going for anything realistic. It's just a game. That's how I felt about Sunset Overdrive. It was like, hey, here's a campaign based game. It's open world. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's also going to be overly, overly ridiculous. So exactly. this this energy drink is turning people into zombie freaks. They kill them with this explosive teddy bear rocket launcher. What <laughs> exactly? <laughs> want to run the money? And she has more just outrageous shit <laughs> instead of this almost realistic type stuff that everyone's trying to spew out nowadays. Just keep it simple. Like I still remember being enthralled on. We're we're gonna go back to Tony Hawk, but. Just, hey, so here's this one level, the downhill jam. Uh, go for the skate. Go for the high score and go for the longest combo. And same thing with SSX. Hey, so here's this slope. Get the biggest point possible. Or uh, don't fall. Or you have a time limit. Get to the end as oh. fast as possible. Indeed. Escape the avalanche. Dude. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> That's how good it is. We all just had flashbacks. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. And then trying to do as many cool ass tricks as possible while escaping it. Uh, I love I'm trying, trying to do a front flip and corkscrewing. <laughs> now, shit was so good, it inspired the scene from Triple uh, X, the old Vin Diesel movie, where he's trying to escape an avalanche on a surfboard or a, a snowboard. <laughs> Nothing like fresh powder. <laughs> that movie was so <laughs> weird. That movie, at least, it was honest, just like the old games. This is about fun. We want it to be fun. Don't read into mm-hmm. it. Don't read into Vin Diesel snowboarding down a mountain with C4 duct tape to his pants. Just it, enjoy the situation. Escape the avalanche. Have fun. Popcorn. Smile. Still love that whole um, that scene early on in the movie. I forgot which which. Uh, no, it wasn't Ryan Nyquist. Who who was the BMXer that that was in the movie for like five seconds? Oh, Matt Hoffman. Yeah, Matt Hoffman. Ah, just the whole like, what's the update with that trick? My Superman seat grab barrel roll. I was actually picturing in my Word. head, how in the fuck would this actually happen? And can we do it in a video game? No. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who knows bikes and trying to do tricks like that, you would die. Please don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, your your survivability percentage is your sur- survivability percentage is uh not high if you attempt that. It was just a he, line in the movie that we all love. He didn't even do it in the movie. Remember they set it up and he goes for the seat grab and instead of committing, he pulls his gun out, shoots the guy on the walkway, and then bails out of the trick and rides away. Mm-hmm. He didn't even do it in the movie. The movie said, "You know what? We're dumb and fun, but this is too dangerous." Nope. Personal foul. Flag on the play. Flag on the Superman play. Superman Secret Barrel? Word. Still working on it. Yeah, I bet. Oh, God. See, but it's some of those ridiculous tricks in some of those old school games that uh, weren't they were they, they they were never meant to be possible like they like that, that was the point of what made them what made them goofy in in the in those old school skateboarding games uh what was one of them like uh i want to oh, say the, it was, it, the franklin grind where you pull out a kite and fly it while you 50 50 down a rail yeah then one of them was uh i, I forgot what the input was but you would go up a ramp and then your character would start break dancing on the skateboard before he landed I okay, I remember that one. I remember that one. I remember the New York Nutbuster. <laughs> <laughs> These are moves in the game. Look it up. Thug one. All right, Franklin's in Thug Two because you find Benjamin Franklin, which is hilarious. He might also be a mass murderer. They're they're figuring that out right now. That was one of the other things that I appreciated about uh about Thug Two was just like all the fucking Easter eggs. Like if you if, when you're in the col- when you're in the the college town and you break into one of the roofs, you can find the original Star Wars kid. Yeah, with uh like just just you know trapping out and doing his thing. For those that know the Star Wars kid, you've been around the internet way too long. If you know the Star Wars kid, um, I like the when you're in Barcelona and you find Steve-O. Shopping cart, shopping cart, man. This bull's <laughs> rad. Yeah. 
or Polly, Wheels of Fury, Ryan, and he would and want it, baby. He would start talking shit to you, like, come back when you're riding some with batteries, bitch. I love what they're talking. This kid, this, he, you can't pick between me and a kid in a body cast. Bring it on, bitch. He kicks. <laughs> you want some of me? Bring it on, bitch. And I love the fact Hell that yeah, all Polly's this is coming out of fire. And he's 10. The he's 10 year old skating man, a madman. <sighs> I love how you could play it. So it, over the top. That was funny. Granted, I love that you could play as Uncle Phil. That was. You mean Phil Margera? Yeah, that one, sorry. Yeah, that's his fucking dad. And the, yeah, that's uh, his and, dad. Why do I call him Uncle Phil? I don't know. Oh, I've been watching way too much Fresh Prince. <laughs> but, um. Uh, Uncle Phil. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to beat Jesse James to actually race Pauly because he has that motorized scooter. And then for those old heads that uh, remember this, when you uh, f- uh, when you fuck up and your character falls and you have the rage meter, yeah, and now you have to yeah. spam, I think it was like triangle or X, and you wanted to get that bitch all the way filled because then you could see your character just straight headbutt a full fledged skateboard. Don't ever try to do that. Just an FYI, my V could do it a lot. Well, yeah, Valeli's built different. <laughs> he really is. I still remember watching some of his old, like, I, yeah, I can say it. I still remember watching his old, like, fight compilations where he was just getting into shit with people. Oh, yeah. I love every jackass who walks up and is like, what are you going to do about it? Not knowing that that is the most dangerous dude in the skate community right there. Like, I'm pretty sure because he kept on getting his name wrong on an episode of Viva La Bam. We'll go back to PlayStation here in a minute. Novak caught just the gnarliest Yo. goddamn right from, uh, from Mike V. Are you playing with me right now? What, man? That's your name. Pop! Uh! <laughs> what was that? Mike yeah, V hit Mike, you, dude. <laughs> Mike V went from zero to black eye immediately. There was no hesitation or in between. <laughs> no fat <that> got bodied. <laughs> A lot, dude. But again, I was... Uh, Again, we're just gonna we're gonna keep with uh, with Thug because there there was so much to unpack in this fucking game. I I love the dynamic of it's Team Tony Hawk versus Team Bam race around the world to complete all these challenges. Oh, and another trick that don't ever try doing it. I'm pretty sure it was made just for the game. Even though uh, the one guy, I believe the actual creator did do it, but the not a spin. We're just spinning in a even- fucking circle. Well, okay, so people actually did that in the 70s, but it's like considered a part of that weird subsect free skating. I personally wouldn't try it. That just seems like an accident waiting to happen. I was about to say, it does seem some like some sort of like Lords of Dogtown type of vibe, like exactly. Stacey Peralta and Tony Alva and all them, for those that know. By the way, go watch Lords of Dogtown. It's a very goaded movie for old, like, for appreciators of the origin of ska- of modern skateboarding. Back when it was was quite literally land surfing. That's what these yep. skateboards were meant to do. And I appreciate the hell out of that. And again, these are all classic titles. If for some reason you can pull out your old PS2 and bust them out, or you have to buy a PS2 or possibly an emulator that can that's controller compatible, I highly recommend every single one of these games that we've uh, that we've spoken about because again, they are they're go to titles. The PS2 into like the uh, like the PS2 in the uh, in the original Xbox era. Of gaming was like the time, you know what I mean? Mm, I know what you mean. The, the, this is how bad it is. If you put us in a room with low light and hit that power up button, all of us will get chills. All of us will get chills instantly. All of us. Like if you if you put the if you put my Xbox directly in front of me, and then next to that is a PS2 with a copy of Sly Cooper on it. Sorry, Xbox. I'm I'm gonna go pick up Sly Cooper and I'm gonna reminisce a little bit. Speaking of reminisce, so that's the name of a song. Or uh, oh, yeah, Troy is the name of the song. Did any of you guys play the uh, NBA Street series? Yes, mm, dude. Sadly, Street no. Two. You never know played the NBA Street series, bro. I think I played like three v three, two like one match at a friend's house. 
<laughs> That's it. Goaded soundtrack. Goaded player. Goaded characters because you had like the legends of the Hall of Famers and all the up and covers. But it's street rules. No fouls. All the other bullshit. And then you could fucking soup. What do they call it? Game breaker dunk over people jumping like 15 feet in the air. Oh yeah, especially with my with my created character, I made him look like well, one of the Harlem Globetrotters. So we're talking mm-hmm. tube socks, uh, uh, Conver- Converse low tops, white, the America shorts, the Harlem jersey, and then the most outrageous afro ever. And then every now and again, I, I would see him hop in the air. That was your time. Alley oop to that motherfucker. Throw it to him, and something cool is about to happen. <sighs> so oh, yeah. did you get? Did you uh, 100% complete the campaign at any point? No, I got so caught up in just playing ball at that point. If you 100% it, you get the original Globe Charters when they're young. Oh, shit. Dude, I was all nostalgic and shit. Oh, man. Uh, I'm, I'm not okay. <laughs> 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 Those are the days, man. So I have a physical copy of that one, and I made sure that if I was going to get any of the street games, it was going to be that one. I love that. Like the NFL Street 3. Fun has corn, Megadeth, yep, uh, Mud yep, Vein, yep. and Slipknot. But NBA Street 2 had the hip hop icons, had the, some of the best basketball players to ever grace the fields. It, it was so much fun. That's, I also played the, uh, the, the NFL Street, but I had so much more fun playing. And this is coming from a guy that's actually played football, but I had more fun playing the basketball game than the football game. And that's, that's just me. Granted, I still love like Madden to the like to this day, and I'm talking Madden, not NFL 2K or whatever the hell. Even though I, I, I'm happy that they went back to Madden for 23, I'm so happy about that. But uh, I love playing <clears throat> the Madden games against my brother because he sucked. Oh, uh, what was it? Speaking of Madden, there was I want to say it was a NCAA title, but you could play as a full game of football. As that respected college's mascot. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay, I remember that. How did I not know about this? I remember that. Yeah. You can play you can play as the mascots and everybody is dressed up as the mascot, just bodying people. For anybody that knows anything about football, the, the, the line, like your like your offensive or defensive line, those are supposed to be some meaty, meaty, meaty boys. Okay, they need to be able to hold the line, and the fact that now I'm playing as the fucking Trojans, and it's just a bunch of skinny dudes with fat heads, um, going uh, like just pushing people back that are supposed to be like 400 pounds. Oh, I had the time of my life on that game. Again, look it up. You think I'm lying? Some some streamers still play it still to this day. Oh, I'm getting all nostalgic now. God damn, dude! Right. right? My mind is running a mile a minute. God, the PS2 was just fucking different. I I want gaming to go back to that. I'm touching back to what Brandon said earlier. Nothing against you, uh, you developers. I want to go for you know hyper realism, and like you can actually see the ball sweat off of this guy's jock strap. Not that I really fucking care. <laughs> I want to I want to take it back to just simpler times. Give us another Jack and Daxter. I'll take another Ratchet and Clank. Hey, give me another, and here's a throwback from some of your old heads. Give me another Siphon Filter. Bro. No, okay. <laughs> He's giving me a vivid flashback. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard the words Siphon Filter since pre-2010. <laughs> oh, Siphon Filter was, was, like, Siphon Filter was crazy. One thing that still stuck out to me is the chase scene where you're, when you're chasing down Gregorov and you corner him in the park and he now wants to fight you. The problem is you can't unless you I think you had to like throw smoke grenades or at least do something to to deter his attention. But as soon as you were in view of him, he you he already had a headshot lined up because it would tell you headshot, meaning he's looking right at you and he's about to kill you. It was one of the hardest boss fights, quote unquote, bo- uh, boss fights I've ever had to deal with, and I believe that is one of my main reasons as to why I don't like Souls like games. That was my first time at like the age of twelve, rage quitting anything. I'm just happy you guys actually heard of Siphon Filter because you'd be amazed how many people actually don't know what the hell Siphon Filter is. 
I, I believe you. It's been quite yeah, yeah. some time since I've heard the name. Let's and it's see. been so I, I collect old copies and consoles. I can't mm-hmm. find a copy of Siphon Filter. <laughs> really? Did trust uh-huh. me. They're not easy to come by. That one and um MVC two are up there in shit that is just difficult to find right now. Marvel versus Capcom, just an FYI. Yeah, if you don't know, get the fuck out. The boys, Leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're late for bed. You're late for bed. Get your stupid Adderall juice, Zoomer. <laughs> Go drink your lean. Actually, no, that's illegal. Never mind. Where's your double cup? Um, <laughs> sorry. I should be on Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. And I think that was also some of the most... Uh, again, I'm going to have to throw it out here, especially when... Uh, Actually, no. The Xbox 360 had the had the had the scholarship edition, but bully, 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 yeah. GTA for kids. Even though you can do a fucking panty raid, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <sighs> so you want to hear something funny? So, Bullies in the same universe as Red Dead. What? What? So. The freak show in Bully, you can find the flyers and posters for it. Sorry, vice versa. You could find the same freak show in both universes. Oh, wow. So a lot of the characters that are really outlandish, uh, Arthur Morgan can find them. Same as the character from Bully. They just might be in different states of health or existence. They might be skeletons because the game's just at 100 years apart. Oh, that's kind of sick. Okay. Rockstar has some world building let me fucking tell you oh yeah that's what i appreciated about bungie uh when they they hadn't announced it yet but i think it was in odst oh yes they had find... the, the poster of destiny that was right there and like one of the hallways see that? hey man i love that shit <laughs> i had to say like, ODST, ODST, the ODST new mass fun. effect teaser is the same way On. Wait, what? What? Oh, you didn't know there's a teaser for a new Mass Effect entry? No. It ends, so it's all characters you've never seen before from a distance, and it ends with uh, Commander Shepard's helmet getting picked up out of the ash and one of his old crewmates looking up at the camera. Oh, dope. Okay. The story continues. It's actually kind of sick. Although I've I've not... I have not liked what I've been hearing about Bioware's situation lately. It's worrying, especially since the new Dragon Age is pretty close to being done. Dragon Age. Duh. I'll have to resort to our other dragon for the information on that. He's tapped into Dragon Age stuff very deeply. Yeah. <laughs> The La- only thing I've been hearing is that a lot of leadership has been leaving. That's that's all I've been hearing. That's really. always happening at Bioware. They don't know how to treat long time. Yeah, they, they're pretty bad at that. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. I'm, I'm, I just um, ADD thought kicked in. Because you said it earlier, uh, or at least the game was like this other franchise, but the old school Splinter Cell games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude. I I think Splinter Cell from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Because of uh, your Splinter Cell franchise, if there's a stealth option, I try my best to take it in every video game ever now. Even something as simple as uh, even though it wasn't the, the best game, but it was, I, I, I forgot the name of it. It was, it was Assassin's Creed, but it took place in England. You You could Pick one of two characters. One of them was to go in there loud and beat syndicate. the hell out of everybody. Uh, yeah, that's it. Syndicate. Yeah, and you could uh, you you could pick the brother and you could beat the shit out of everybody and go loud because that was the point of him. Or you can pick the girl character and actually try you know your hand at being a uh, being a stealthy boo boo. I tried my hand at being a stealthy boo boo, and the problem is it never worked. Like oh, it dude. never fucking worked. Oh, I I always went with the the girl character on that one and. Honestly, surprisingly, I actually did a pretty good job. There were those cases where I was like, "Oh well, that's that 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 kind of sucks," 
I guess I'm fighting, but <laughs> time to go loud. Not gonna lie, I think it was. I don't know. I had a good Yield time grenade it. and run. <laughs> Yield grenade and then run, hide, and do this shit again. Jump into a bale of hay from 300 feet up. Because Red Bull gives you wings. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, sir. But yeah, I love, I love Splitter Cell games. It's because of the Splitter, of Splitter Cell games that I had found a new love for for stealth uh, for stealth games, or at least stealth aspects. That in that in Sly Cooper because Sly Cooper was just goofy fun though. Okay, uh, now that makes now that makes me think. Mm-hmm. What would be? No, Twisted Metal was on PS3, wasn't it? Twisted Metal Black was on PS2, and it was one of the greatest titles of all time. Yep. Yeah, I just had, I just had to double check. I was just like, was Twisted Metal on there? I am. I'm a fan of Twisted Metal lore. All you need to do is ask. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, anything you need to know, I'm your guy. Well, he's your guy, not me. That's a bunny girl. And then, uh. Well, oh, there, there was also the the Western games that were on there, like the very first Red Dead. Whoa, Red Dead Revolver. Revolver. Ah! Oh. There you go. The, a bullet <laughs> time was fucking incredible, dude. Red Harlow, end game with the Scorpion Revolver. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, man. 45. Smith and Weston. Let's go. Sorry. Like, like nothing against you, Redemption, but your predecessor was the fucking tits. I I would love for an HD remake of that. The only problem is the fan base would be like, this isn't part of the canon. Ah, why why we wanted a new game, not a remake. I don't care. I want Jack Swift. I want Pig Josh. I want General Diego. Give me Buffalo Soldier so I can overcharge my musket with a seventy five caliber bore with too much black powder and put a hole through everything that way. And destroy your shoulder the in the process. <laughs> <laughs> this man went in. So, I'll, because that game is kind of unheard of, and I am in a Wild West esque setting in my current DD campaign, I use a lot of characters from it as the NPCs. And most of the time, nobody catches it. But then I introduced Professor Perry one night, and Thomas and Adrian slammed the table. That son of a bitch is a villain! Get him! (laughs) Like, first first of all, that's out of character. Second of all, relax. We're in an apartment. The neighbors can hear you. (laughs) Oh, my fucking God, dude. (laughs) I can just picture this now, like especially your neighbors listening. It's just like, no, he's right. Fuck that guy. Carry on. He's a snake oil salesman. <laughs> See, this is why I want to do a, a, a like a tabletop episode of just stupid shit that's happened at D and D or playing tabletop games, which we might be able to do in the future. But um, I'm so down. I even have a new horror story that's not at my table. But man, is it yikes! Because we got some horror stories over uh, over the game. Guess who? It got heated, very heated. I mean, as it is, okay. I would love for one day for us just to do D and D. I know it's gonna have to be over online, but one day, maybe one day. I found a D and D world. I'm not talking about VR. I'm talking proper D and D. On like, uh, okay, I'm down. I'm down. I'll, 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 if you, all you guys need to do is ask, we'll organize. I'll put something together for us. All right, because I, I just got some dice too for one of my friends. Maybe we, maybe we can like record at least our, the audio of it, and then we can have a uh, our own uh, like our own little uh, thing of thing. Well, I was thinking about again. using one of the online servers so I could put out a map and move you guys around. All right. Yeah, again, I wanna, we're gonna we're gonna try to make to make a lot of things happen. So, but, I actually, had people who follow us request we do that the other day. <laughs> do a D and D campaign. What's up? Yeah, uh, hey, I'd love it, man. I'd fucking, I'm so down. I'm in. I'm in. I'm sold. If I'm we get Dirtle sold. though, man, I, I can't. I can't promise he won't TPK you guys on accident. Perfectly fine. I just don't want Frazier to keep on asking him about the mailboxes. Oh. If you read the Discord, you'd know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Frazier, the FBI guy's watching right now. Shut up. 
He, he's white. He doesn't get worried about authority figures keeping an eye on him. Very true. Very true. <laughs> hey, editor, cut that. <laughs> before, before we no, get no, around to that, I'm, I'm Western video games. Western, Western video, video games. games. Gun? Uh, Did you know I was gun? Just, I was gun. just about to say gun. Wow. Uh, Ned's Buffalo Rifle gives me chills, dude. I, I get so sad. Where'd you get that? Oh, I can't, I can't say that line. I forgot that line is fucked. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just I was just about to be like, Neh. Again, a very classic, very classic Western game. I love me a Western game, even though I haven't played our Red Dead 2 yet, just because I'm afraid I'll get lost in the sauce. No skill theater. D- we yell at DJ until he completes the main campaign. I'm down. I'm now that I know that I need to remember recording shit, I'll. I can. I'll. I just got my fucking internal SSD too. I got four terras for that, then sixteen terras for recording. What? I can do this. Let's go. Let's go. I'm down. What? What just fell on my foot? Can we oh, for the, the no skill theater tomorrow? We in... Oh, we're doing a no skill theater tomorrow. Yeah, Far Cry. Sick. When someone remembers to download it. Ooh, I'm downloading it sorry. after this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys would know this game. Because it was kind of a meh hit or miss game. It was on the it was on the PlayStation. Juarez it's another Western Bound game. Blood. That one was on the 360. I was just gonna say the first two Call of Juarez. Yep. Yep. I, sorry, Call of Juarez. Yeah. I remember those. Indeed, I like westerns. Let's talk so about it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the just, just the old man trying to protect this kid from uh, from getting into danger, and then some of his voice lines where he's just like, "Oh, before I do this, I gotta reload." Why do you have to say it so cool like that? Why? That's not fair. I want to be able to do that. Uh... Kiss. So, Lid, what was your what was your take on on Call of Juarez when when you first played it? Yes, I did call it Call of uh, Juarez when I first got it because this is before I knew. Hey, uh, you're dumb. It's Juarez. You're Mexican. I know, but I lived okay. with a black mother, and she called it Juarez. <laughs> that makes sense. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um. I I enjoy the hell out of it. I like the outlandish story elements. I did it. It does feel like <clears throat> sorry. It does feel like more of an arcade shooter versus Gun or Red Dead or things of the like. But it was yeah. fun. It lets you get outlandish. It lets you do the bullet time to shoot dynamite bundles out of the air. And when yep. it was time to fan the hammer, you just ba 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 ba. Let's go. All right, send it. Send it. <laughs> so then, did you play Call of Wars? The first one. Or are you too young? Okay. But I remember, remember it anything? so vaguely. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's Understandable. So it is a very old game. In the very back in my <laughs> very mind. Old. Very old. My emulator has dust on it. That's how old that game is. Great. I will admit, I'd never played uh, the third one. I didn't know there was a third one for the longest fucking time. Like, I'm talking, I already had an Xbox One, and I was already sucked into Warframe type of, I didn't know that there was a third one. Warframe, the devourer of souls. Warframe. Warframe, the devourer of my fucking time and money and wallet, because I got tired of grinding for Warframes, and so I thought, fuck it, I'll just buy the bundles, especially the white editions, because they were even better than the regular ones, and yeah, now I'm going too far. Hi, how are you? <sighs> Do we need to bring up the Sorry. amount of money you spent on Smite? Uh, no, because at least those were for skins, not the not the gods themselves. Fair point. But that like, was a the lot of money still. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Trust me, I know I'm stupid, but Warframe was just that game where it's like, okay, you want to get this one Warframe. Especially when it came to Equinox, hey, you have to get eight parts instead of the normal three. A chassis, a helm, and a blueprint. You needed eight for this bad boy. And it was impossible to get some of them because you it required a team to cooperate. And when you're playing with Tom, good luck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, he's about to destroy our comment section in this video. He's been brought up like four times. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bud. Eh, it's fine. He doesn't watch this. It's all good. 
<laughs> See you at D&D on Monday, loser. Dumbass. Look at that. Look at that boy. You did. Look at that. Uh, love you, Lydian. Known you too damn long to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then y'all give me a game because I've I've been bringing up all these all these different games because I know we're not at time but we're 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 getting there. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So then y'all give me a game like give give me give me some of your fondest memories. What game? Uh, what, game we, uh, what game we're looking at? I think I'm gonna bring it up to the game that started. I guess the fed or like the the hack and slash combo genre. My love for Ninja Devil Gaiden. May Cry. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, Ninja Gaiden's also a good one too. But Ninja Gaiden too. <laughs> but it started with me, Devil May Cry three, and then it spiraled into what it is to now. Where I, other than part two, we don't talk about that one. Any of those Devil Cries, I will play hands down anytime. Just because I just love that series so goddamn much. <laughs> so, uh, as a as a guy that's like n- never never played DMC, what's wrong with Part Two? It was incredibly easy. It was not creative at all. Honestly, the, the story was pretty bad. Boss fights were. Not imaginative. Some of them were just... One of them was just a tank. <laughs> That's all it was. You know, and, then the, the, edge. The, and then the one of the last ones was a freaking just a helicopter with a bunch of flesh stuff around it. Be like, oh, it's a demon helicopter. Look at that. <laughs> so, you know what franchise was around at the same time and didn't do that? What's that? God of War. God of War don't miss. God of War still delivering True. hack and slash action to True. this day, and they ain't miss once. Hey, but you want to know I, what may open the door for God of War? Don't make cry. Not a demon helicopter. I'll tell you that much. I, I, I mean, agree I, with I, you. T- part two was awful, and the fact that it came out a year, bad. a year, and or not, or I think it was even less after part one. That was should have been a red flag for anyone. Even if it was back then. In fact, you could beat the game in its entirety using only the pistols says something. <laughs> oh my god. Part one, three, four, and five are only ones you should ever play. Especially three and five. Those were the goats. <laughs> Cause I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't I don't mind if it's like, hey, so it's a hack and slash and you're fi- and you're fighting literal artillery and robots because well I was a huge fan of uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I love the fact that they decided, hey, it's time to just go weird and go goofy with it. So now you're going to be this 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 cyborg that can don a poncho and uh, I forgot the name of the fucking hat. I am so I had a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> I have like three of them. I forgot the name. Okay. You can don a poncho to sombrero, and it's you like making up. I, I forgot who it was, but you have like this weird sexual tension with one of the characters that you interact with. The weirdest one liners, and then it's just hey, so I'm gonna start comboing out on this literal tank right here that's shooting rockets at me, and I'm not immediately imploding. I would love another revenge. It's just because again, I do love hack and slash games too. My what my go to was always uh, Ninja Gaiden 2, Tiger Fang, and Bear Claw. Best combo ever. We don't talk about Ninja Gaiden 3 because it fucking sucked. Did I say that out loud? Sorry. <clears throat> but you are right, especially with God of War. God of War is just hands down when it comes when it comes to the uh the hack and slash fighter, like fighter genre as a whole. God of War just did it. It did. And it really it did. did. It did. Full that in one, in, in one of the games, you got to see titties too, you know, and that was that was great. I'm very, I'm very one? appreciative of that. Yeah, more than one, but I think it was all of them, wasn't it? it Pretty much. To spoil everything, goddamn! Now they're only going to go play because they're going to be horny on main. Although, spoiler will... alert: if you didn't jerk off 15 years ago when the game came out, you're a little late. Although I will say, for the longest time, I was never able to play part one or two because, for some goddamn reason, no matter which 
how, disc, if it was a brand new disc, or if it was the PlayStation, because I've had technically three of them in my lifetime. For some fucking reason, I can never get those discs to work on the PlayStation. I don't know why. <laughs> they just never wanted to run, and then it took me like 15 plus years to actually play those damn games. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with them. They could have been new disc, new game, and for some reason they just wouldn't start. I don't know why. Never heard of that one. Speaking speaking of discs, I just want I just want to throw this one out here real quick. I think this is more alluding to the very first PlayStation more than P, more than PS2, but the disc art for a lot of PlayStation One games was just stick. The fact that it looked like it came uh, it was it came in just a, a CD case, like an actual music CD case, and. Mm-hmm. The cover art, especially for the Tony Hawk games, it looked oh, like yeah. it would be the cover art for a punk rock album. Tony Hawk and Mega Man, th- those ones, mm, beautiful. Uh-oh. I'm starting to get into the, more into these whole "do you take the deal" types of deals. This one doesn't require an explanation; just a simple yes or no. You could have an entire basement of just nothing but retro consoles, retro anything, retro, retro, retro at. The behest, you will never be able to touch anything new ever again. So I'm talking you have up until the uh, the Xbox, uh, the very first Xbox. Nothing passed. Do you take it? You will never be able to play anything new again. But you have all the retro at your disposal. Uh, I'd have to, I had to say no. Understandable. You'd want as to keep much up with as, the times. As much as I love those games, it's it's the whole point of I've already played them, and eventually I will get bored. Understandable. They're always huh? just, it's always that whole thing of, I'll go back to play them for nostalgia and I'll just maybe have a good time for maybe an hour or two and then put it down and pick it up maybe like a month later or something. I don't know. Okay. Understandable. Swinging back over here swiftly. So essentially, your entire emulator is all is all you can play forever now. You won't be able to touch mm-hmm. an Xbox ever again outside of Xbox, uh, the very first Xbox. Would you take that deal of nothing but retro, but nothing new ever again? Uh, no, because I need to know how the Hunt Showdown story ends. I'm not quite there yet. We're not there yet, but we will be someday. <laughs> And I am always fiending for the next Fallout in, out, or Fallout release. The Fallout has me by the balls in the worst way, and I absolutely love that franchise. To where, once again, airport security stopped me for a pleasant conversation because they're like, "Hey, that's a nice backpack. What? What's your favorite Fallout game?" And I'm like, "Am I in? Am I in trouble? Are we okay?" And I'm like, and "He's like, Is yeah, yeah as long as you don't." He's like, yeah, yeah, as long as you don't say Fallout Tactics. I'm like, don't you fucking put that evil on me. And then I yelled at the security guard. We laughed. We joked. We had fun. His daughter stole his computer, so now he's building one. Loser. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Fallout Fallout and Hunt Showdown got me in a violent grip, and I don't think I'd be able to pull myself away from him. All right. All right. All right. I think for me, I would say yes. As much as I wouldn't be able to talk uh, to talk to you guys or my friends anymore, I would be perfectly content playing every single campaign-based PlayStation One, Two, uh, One and Two game, is including a uh, uh, original Xbox, original Fable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and then dope. retro, including all the arcade cabinets that I would want to play, such as MK, The Simpsons, Silent Scope. We discussed we discussed the, those games before. Which, if we can, we might do another one of them. Now, I'd like to let I'd like to know. What are some of your guys' uh, favorite PS2 titles? What memories do you have? What, ga- what games have you guys played? Who's old that watches us? Or who's young and cultured? I love you already if you are one of them. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us, the No Skill Boys, and the No Skill Pod. In this episode of the No Skill Podcast, I'd like to let you know that down below, there's some buttons in the comic section. Do whatever the hell you want with them. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.